welcome to this episode of Steph Talks Trash. My name is Stephanie Valentic, Editorial Director of Waste360. Today's episode, we'll speak with Nicole Baker, the founder of Net Your Problem LLC. Net Your Problem offers fishing gear services to the fishing industry for end of life nets and gear. We'll hear from Nicole about her challenges in creating this business and the challenges of taking this recyclable material and bringing it to suppliers. Enjoy the show. Thank you for joining me today. First, tell me a little about your background and how you got started with Net Your Problem. I have a master's degree in fisheries biology. So when I graduated, um, I was looking for a job and one of the ones that was available was a fisheries observer position, which is scientists that go on board commercial fishing vessels and they collect information about what the fishermen are catching, where they're catching it, species, all of this information and then report it to the federal government so that they can use that to manage fisheries and determine how much people should catch and things of that nature. And so that during that job, I traveled to a lot of different fishing ports in Alaska. And at the end of my um, time with that job, which was in, I think, September of 2015, there was a story came out about a fishing gear sneaker So Adidas was making this prototype shoe out of confiscated fishing gear. And for me, that was just this light bulb moment that fishing gear is recyclable because it's made out of plastic. I had been working on boats for five years and that just had not clicked up until that moment. So I realized Mm -hmm. that fishing gear is recyclable and I was just sitting in a port with piles of fishing gear all around and thinking if this is recyclable, we should we should be trying to do that. So I spent the next two years after that trying to find some place to send the gear to. Um, And I found a recycling company on Twitter, just how I connected with you on Twitter, actually. And um, so we figured out how to send our first amount of nets to them. And while I was doing the collection for that, I was thinking about how sort of I would be able to continue this work long term because I was paid Um, for my trip when I went there to do the first collection by a nonprofit. And so everybody was asking me, how are you getting paid? Like, how is the business going to make money? Um, Or how are you going to make money from this? And so the solution to that was to start a business. So Net Your Problem was started at the beginning of 2018. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the challenges that you saw with creating this pipeline and the supply chain of, you know, collect from for collecting fishing nets to actually turning it into a product? Yeah. So I guess the, the first problem was, I guess, where to send it to. Right. So that was what I was trying to figure out for the first couple of years. And I wasn't working on this like full time, but the, mm-hmm. you know, fishing gear plastic is made out of HDPE and PP and nylon. And so there are recyclers that are set up to accept HDPE milk jugs, but perhaps not HDPE fishing gear. So the main challenge was finding recyclers that were set up to accept this specific kind of material. So I think we're doing pretty good on that part now. Um, Our main challenge for the collection is basically figuring out who is going to pay for it. Um, I I feel like that's such a cliche answer, like the money is the problem, Mm -hmm. but you know, it really is hard to incentivize paying for recycling when other Mm -hmm. disposal options like the landfill are free or you could store your old lines in your front yard. So for us, the main challenge is communicating to people the value of paying for recycling as their disposal option. Are you going out there and are you finding other trash or waste or things that, you know, even from the environmental perspective, the animals that you're seeing that are being caught in these nets? Yeah, so our work is focused primarily on end of life fishing gear. So that's not anything that's being recovered from the water or the beaches. We're sort of offering um, a waste management solution for fishing gear where the alternatives are landfill, incineration, or indefinite storage, which I mentioned previously. Mm -hmm. So process is basically, um, our team has experience in the fishing industry, like I mentioned myself, and also Um, our colleague in Maine, and then the one in California has a lot of experience with partnership building. So we have two different ways of collecting material. One is by starting collection programs ourselves. 
So that's in places where gear is not being disposed of through a recycling method. We talk mm -hmm. with the fishermen and go through their net storage piles with them and tell the, you know, offer our services to them basically. And then they can choose if they want to dispose of the material with us or not. The other thing that we do is there are groups already in Alaska that are collecting fishing gear and have been since before my business started, like even since 10 years ago. And the recycling market has changed a lot, obviously, since regulations have been enacted about shipping to China and other, um, and other countries. So the places that people were sending fishing gear to be recycled 10 years ago perhaps are not available anymore. So we're working with those groups to get new markets for their web, uh, primarily in Europe and Canada are where our recyclers are located. So how much waste have you, have you collected and turned over so far? I think our running tally right now is 914,000 pounds. So for those that aren't in the US, that's about 415 tons. And we do this pr collection primarily in the summers. Um, so we collect an average of 120 tons a year, probably. Our efforts, like everything, were hampered um, this year by COVID, but we still were able to send some for recycling this year. So tell me a little bit about your reach in Alaska and elsewhere. Um, you've alluded a little bit to it before. What projects are you working on and where have you seen success so far? Yeah, so we have in Alaska five places that we've collected gear from. And, you know, it's interesting that you refer to them as projects because I do also, but I was thinking that they're not really projects because the idea of Net Your Problem is to offer a solution for fishing gear recycling that continues year over year. So I think it, I, I was thinking that we should change calling it projects to be sort of just initializing the disposal in that area. And so we have mm -hmm. ongoing collection programs in Dutch Harbor, in Kodiak, and then Cordova is the place that we're helping them find new markets starting this year. Um, and then we also have in development um, collecting nets from Bristol Bay, where a lot of the wild salmon comes from. And then also we did do a one-time project um, in King Cove, Alaska, that was uh, funded by a tribe. And we worked with the solid waste management consultancy, Delta Back Call Company on that project. Um, so that's what we've got going on in Alaska so far. And a majority of the gear that we collect does come from Dutch Harbor. I think it's about 75% of our totals. That's where we have been collecting the longest. Um, and also those nets are very large and weigh a lot. So that just um, gives a lot of weight to, to that specific location. And then mm -hmm. as far as where are we in development, um, we just recently sent our first load from California. Um, I live in Seattle. So we've done a little bit of collection um, from the Alaska Fishery Science Center and other places um, in Washington. And then what we have sort of the most in development is our collection center in Maine. So a couple of months ago, we opened a rope depot um, that's right outside of Belfast in Maine and fishermen can drop off line um, there. And then we prioritize the reuse of that material actually. So there is a huge reusing artist community in Maine that will purchase the line to weave it into mats or make art or other different ways of reusing it. So we have the intention of uh, prioritizing reuse so that depot is open and we've been selling um, secondhand line out of there. And then anything that people are not interested in purchasing specific colors or diameters then we'll send that for recycling. But that is, is just getting started and we're looking to build support for fishermen to pay to drop off their gear at the depot. Shifting gears a little bit, uh, where does legislation come into, you know, battling marine debris and finding solutions to things like this? Um, uh, we saw Save Our Seas uh, 2.0, we have the National Recycling Strategy. Uh, what, what's your take on, you know, where the government and where the organizations play a role in kind of coming together and creating something that's circular? Yeah. Yeah. From my understanding of Save Our Seas, I think the 
the tenant of it that is most applicable to our work is improve, improving domestic plastic waste management, which is basically mm -hmm. what Net Your Problem is doing. We are taking a plastic product and we are improving the waste manage of that by recycling it instead of uh, sending to landfill or incinerator. So I think if there is support and funding for developing ways of addressing waste before it gets into the environment, that to me is the most um, effective way of, of preventing marine debris is just by improving mm -hmm. the waste management. But I think if um, there are also you know, incentives for improving domestic recycling capacity, then we can send that material that we collect to recyclers in the U.S. rather than having to send it to recyclers outside. That would definitely be beneficial to us. Um, I also think improving the recycling capacity allows for marine debris when it is collected to be recycled. Um, I think there are examples such as the, um, the ocean cleanups work where they're collecting stuff from the water and they're making sunglasses out of it and people are going crazy over that. So I think there really would be a demand for the products that are produced from marine debris that is um, collected. And if we can figure out a way to cost effectively recycle that, I'm hoping that's a, a market-based solution that we could mm -hmm. encourage as a way of dealing with marine debris. Say, I, you know, I live on a coastal town in North Carolina and I just found out about Net Your Problem. How do I get involved with your organization? We have a, a section on our website for this, actually. It's called Get Involved and it's set up based on different um, roles that people might have. But the logistics partners that we involve in our work are actually what we call sort of our uncommon partners. So mm -hmm. for example, we had like a brewery volunteer to host our um, processing in California. And a brewery, I don't think is somebody that you would traditionally consider to be involved in marine debris or waste management mm -hmm. or recycling. And the same for our, um, our logistics in Kodiak in Alaska, the person that is loading the nets into containers is actually a construction company so they have the equipment that you need to um, put the nets into the container. So why not include them too? And so we're just trying to be very diverse and broad about who we involve in our logistics supply chain. So if you identify with our mission and feel like you have something that might be valuable to us in terms of collecting fishing gear, processing it and sending it, um, loading it into containers and then sending it out, that please reach out to us. And then obviously financial con contributions. Um, we're not really looking for grants or donations. What we're really looking for are people that financially benefit and see the value in what we're doing long-term from diverting waste from the landfill. And so we're trying to engage and involve as many people as possible in the different geographies and basically build a coalition of those that um, see a long-term strategy and would be able to contribute sort of in a long-term way um, rather than just, oh, I'd like to donate a certain amount of money just this year because that, you know, while, while useful in building the programs, we need to figure out how to pay for the cost of this over the long term. So um, if you identify with that, uh, we'd love you to be part of one of our coalitions. What's next for Net Your Problem? Where, where do you see yourself in three to five years? Well, I'd like to start paying myself, firstly. Um, we are a startup and I do have another job as a research scientist at a university. So most of the revenue that we bring in, we just invest back into the business. So that would be a good start. Um, but then otherwise, it's just about expanding geography, geographically, excuse me, both within and outside of the US. And our model right now relies on regional coordinators. So we have a California representative, a, a U.S. Northeast representative, and then I'm sort of the Alaska Pacific Northwest representative. So when we expand geographically, that's going to mean sort of hiring new regional coordinators and then basically diverting more fishing gear um, into the recycling and the plastic supply chain and hopefully expanding our solution to many more fishing ports. Thank you. Thank you. And have a great day. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Stephanie.
Thank you for watching today's episode of Steph Talks Trash. For this and other episodes, please visit Waste360.com.